Brocam here, and last time I put this together so I could figure out how to make my own uh, custom interface and PTT button for my Yaesu FTDX10. So I've already gone through the trouble of splitting out a cable, and uh, this is the prototype I have with uh, a very hastily put together three and a half millimeter jack to interface with my Go XLR to get my microphone input into the radio. And for my PTT button, I just take these two wires and touch them together. And I'm happy to say that it works pretty well. Uh, I have to change some of the levels for the microphone, but that's to be expected. Um, so now that I have everything written out here, so if we look at the diagram, uh, I'll, I'm going to put the nicer dry diagram up on screen. But this is, I believe, the 568B, T568B standard for uh, Ethernet jack wiring. So position one is white orange, then orange, then white green, then blue, then white blue, then green, then white brown, and brown. So for my microphone to work, I need to take blue and connect that to uh, TRS ground. And I need to take white blue and connect that to TRS ring and sleeve. And I just did both because this is a mono output source. So uh, I wasn't sure which one to use. So just use both of them. And hopefully that doesn't cause any issues. Uh, and then for the PTT, we're going to connect one side of our white brown wire to a switch. And then one side to, of our green wire to a switch and that will be our PTT. So like I said, I've tested this already. Uh, my first iteration before I made this big long wire was uh, I just had I have an extra mic capsule that I stuck in here and um, this uh, worked okay but this since this wasn't the final mic I didn't spend too much time tuning this. I just wanted to see if it would work and it did. Okay so now I'm going to build the final thing and I don't need to include this in line. I can actually just make one off of, say, a spare Cat6 cable that I have laying around. So I'm pretty sure I got one in the basement. So I'm gonna go grab that. And also while I'm out, uh, I distinctly remember a floor switch for our skeleton decorations for Halloween. So I think I'm going to go grab that too. Here is the CAT6 cable I have. I think it's about 12 feet. And then here's what's going to be my floor switch. It is a big demo try me button from uh, our skeleton decorations. Uh, these are sent in the box for when stores set these up in store. They can put these out so people can try the decorations and they turn on. So the first thing I'm going to do is this wire doesn't have any ends on either side. I'm going to put an RJ45 end on one side so that's done. So if you've never done this before, you're going to need an RJ45 crimper and um, you're going to need an RJ45 end. And I would recommend if you can find it, I believe I got these from Monoprice. This has a... Uh, so if you look in here, there's nothing in here uh, because you're supposed to put the wires in here first and then put this inside here. The, these, in my opinion, are way easier to do than if you're just doing uh, normal RJ45 ends where you have to stick the wires all the way in here before you can crimp it. So I'll show you how to use this specific one. So again, I'm using the T568B color code standard for crimping this wire because that is how I figured everything out is in re relation to that standard. So we're going to take a length and we're going to strip it and you don't want to strip too far uh, and risk cutting the wires underneath. So I'll try to find an equivalent to uh, this kind of tool um, and even some RJ45 ends. Um, 
I'm going to begin by stripping this. Uh, you don't want to strip down too far and cut through the wires underneath. You just want to get the jacket and you can kind of bend the wires a little bit to get it to do that. And once you get it pretty far, you should just be able to pull it apart. You gotta untwist all these. Uh, I am using Cat 6. I don't think you need to use Cat 6. I just, I have had a thousand foot spool of it for about 15 years, and every time I need a piece, I just cut it off. So I think I'm down to about 300 feet left. So now we're going to grab our comb here. Let me see if I can get a look, look see here. So if you can see here, it might be a little hard to see if I flip it this way. You can see how there's an opening at the top here on this side. So that's going to be oriented this way. So pin one is here. It's this side. Go ahead and start threading these in. So white, orange, white, orange, orange. We have uh, white, green, um, and then we're going to do blue. After white green is blue, solid green, uh, white brown is next, and brown. R really, you could wire this up in whatever way you want. I just think it's useful to follow a standard so that if I have to cut the other end for whatever reason, uh, I know what it's wired up as. So sometimes these wires don't want to come, so I just grab a little needle nose, give them a little shake. Usually they come on through. And now we're going to take this piece and get it as far down as we can. This is not data, so it's not the most critical to get this, uh, get all this perfect. But uh, now we can just cut off the excess. Bunch of jumper wires there if you want to save those. So now we just take this, making sure white orange is on the left with the our, our gold contacts facing up. You can see it just goes on in. And now you stick this in. I kind of push the wire forward a little bit, not a ton of force, just a little bit, and then squeeze. And it doesn't take a lot of force, but you just squeeze it, and it should not be coming out at all. So I think that's good to go. It looks good. All the wires look like they're punched down in there. So this side is done. This is going to be the side that plugs into our radio. So now I'm going to plug this side into my radio and I'm going to measure out how much of this I need and I'm going to cut off the excess. So I'm back. This is about six feet now. Uh, I did leave it a little long just to be safe because I still want to cable manage this kind of nicely. So leave myself a little bit extra in case I have to run it up and around something. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this back pretty far. Um, it uh, just give me room to work with. So I think I'm done with this for now. I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. So if we go back to our diagram, we really only need our blue, white, blue, and we need our solid green and our white brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little piece of tape and, uh, or a little piece of glue actually. I'm just gonna put some uh, glue on the ends of these just to prevent just to be doubly sure that nothing shorts out here. Now we're all taped up. Now we can move on. So now I gotta solder my blue and white blue wires to here for the microphone. These are these are the three and a half millimeter jacks I like to use. They're solder on connectors. Uh, and I'm gonna have links to these down in the description. So we have our white blue and our blue. Our blue is our mic ground, so that is going to go to this big piece here. Go ahead and tie this up. Screw this on. So now that this part's done, this is going to be for the microphone. I need to figure out what to do with this foot switch. Okay, so we have our going to be our foot switch, and this is a waterproof connector. We're going to have to cut off eventually, but I'm going to check it right now just to see if I can get these probes in here, and I might be able to. So let's go ahead. Continuity mode. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. So those are these two. Okay. That's good. That's good to see. So it's on as long as I hold it down. I was worried it was a momentary switch. But it is just a regular PTT button. So let's go ahead and cut this end off. Might need to break out the X-Acto knife. There we go. Okay. Oh, this is very thin wire. That's okay, because all we're doing is causing a short to ground to trigger the PTT. So let's just um, hook it up that way and see how it goes. I'm trying to think if I have any uh, taps I can do. Oh, I have, I have these. I can do these. That makes things nice and tidy. I was worried that I would have to have this permanently attached. Oh, very cool. Okay, yes, we're gonna use these. If you're not sure what these are, these are miniature. Yeah, I've got a set here for an example. These are little banana plugs. And they just slot together like that. How cool is that? So there we go. Um, I'm going to get just a little bit of heat shrink, cover these up about this much. Boom, boom. And uh, that'll be this switch side done, uh, other than getting a little bit of a rubber something for the back here. And then I can do the same thing to the plug side. And for the plug side, the process is exactly the same. Now, we're just going to put a little bit of heat shrink over these, and we should be done. So now this plugs into my Go XLR to get my uh, line out from my microphone. And then this plugs into my foot switch. And it looks something like this. You just take these and plug them in. And I don't think that they will touch. They look like they're pretty close, but I think they really have to would be mashed together for them to touch. And I think that's thanks to the heat shrink here. So yeah, and so now that should be my PTT. So I'm gonna go see if it works. It's time for the moment of truth. So here's my Go XLR setup. I've got line in set to 50, and then I've got line, so this is gonna be the radio coming in. And that's just a three and a half millimeter TRS plugged into the headphone jack, plugged into the line in of the Go XLR. I, then, it, then I have a line out, uh, which is 55%. And uh, that's going to be my microphone going back out to the radio through that new cable we just made. So let's flip on over to our radio. All right. Uh, I am on a dummy load. Five watts. It's a 10 watt dummy load, so. Uh, and if I press down, so you can see, um, you can see up over there in the filter where it's kind of looks like uh, white noise. So when I key up, that should disappear. And I'm just keying with my foot, that's so cool. All right, so now if I talk into the mic when I do that, you should see some activity on the on the uh, the waterfall there. Kilo 8 Alfa Romeo Hotel. Radio test, radio test, radio test. Kilo 8 Alfa Romeo Hotel. How cool is that? Kilo 8 Alfa Romeo Hotel. Kilo 8 Alfa Romeo Hotel. I 
So what's happening there? Well, as best I can tell, I'm getting RFI into some the microphone cable somehow. I don't know if it's into the XLR cable. I don't know if it's just into the audio cable or what. Uh, what I've done is I've made a new RJ45 stub that breaks out to the banana plugs so I can plug in a uh, three uh, wire shielded cable for my three and a half millimeter to my Go XLR. I've done that for a few other things and that seemed to help a lot with keeping RFI out. Um, I'm still facing those issues. So I think what I need to do now is invest in some decent chokes to try to choke out any RFI that might be getting into, into and out of things. So that's where I'm at now. I'm not going to give up on this because I think this is be really cool to get it working. Um, I think if I just had a regular microphone, uh, that didn't have to deal with all the computer and stuff, I think that would, it'd be working fine. So I think the concept is there. I think it's just the, uh, the fact that I think RFI is getting into the Go XLR somehow, and that's passing that along to the radio. So there's Amazon affiliate links to all the stuff I use down in the description that I think this is a really cool, worthwhile project. If you need more info on banana plugs, I have a separate video, which should have been linked back when I was talking about them. And, uh, you should be able to find it in my playlist somewhere. This has been amateur hour. I'm the broke cam 73.